If you have your Bible, go with me to Amos chapter 9 from verse 11. Faith for sowing and reaping. Faith for sowing and reaping. In fact, I'm going to be teaching you how to reap. Aggressive reaping. You need to sow aggressively and you need to reap aggressively. Many people don't know how to reap their harvest. In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen and close up the breaches thereof and I will raise up his ruins and I will build it as in the days of old that they may possess the remnant of Edom and all the heathen which are called by my name saith the Lord that doeth this behold the days come saith the Lord that the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the treader of grapes him that soweth seed and the mountains shall drop sweet wine and the hills shall melt Amos 9.13 in the message says yes indeed it won't be long now God's decree things are going to happen so fast your head will swim one thing fast on the heels of the other you won't be able to keep up everything will be happening at once and everywhere you look blessings blessings like wine pouring off the mountains and the hills praise God for his word I want to focus in here about raising the tabernacle of David and sowing and reaping because this is a prophetic word where God says he will raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen and then immediately tied into that God says the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the treader of grapes him that soweth seed and the mountains shall drop sweet wine and all the hills shall melt and so we have been looking at Amos 9.13 but I sense the Spirit of God saying to me that the tabernacle of David goes together with the sowing and reaping in Acts chapter 15 verse from verse 13 the Apostle James who was the half-brother of Jesus quotes the portion of scripture in explaining the Gentiles becoming members of the body of Christ now what was happening is that these Jewish Christians uh, the Jewish people they got born again and then they saw that even the Gentiles all the races that were non-Jews were getting saved and they tried to put burdens on the Gentiles and Gentiles just means the, the, the races that are not Jews because you see salvation was not only for the Jews and it's not only for the Jews it's God so loved the world he loves every nation every human being Jesus died for everyone's sins and so some of these Jews sometimes your religion or what you have been involved in in the past is holding you back from moving into the fullness of God and so the book of Hebrews speaks a lot about that that these were Jewish Christians who got born again and they still wanted to practice Judaism they still wanted to be legalistic in the time of grace and when you are legalistic in grace you fall from grace and you can only operate by faith through grace faith cannot operate without grace and grace is given so that you can walk by faith and so you can receive and when you're legalistic you go into condemnation and so these Jewish Christians born again Christians were putting burdens on the Gentile Christians and one of the things they wanted them now to get circumcised 
uh, just like how the Jews were circumcised. So they had a council meeting in Jerusalem where the apostles had to discuss these things. And James, the half-brother of Jesus, meaning that James had a different father to Jesus. And so in Acts chapter 15 verse 13 uh, it says and after they had held their peace James answered saying men and brethren hearken unto me Simeon had declared how God at first did visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name and to this decree uh, and to this agree the words of the prophets as it is written and he quotes Amos, after this I will return and I will build again the tabernacle of David, which is fallen down, and I will build again the ruins thereof. And verse 17, that the residue of men might seek after the Lord and all the Gentiles upon, upon whom my name is called, saith the Lord, who doeth all these things. And so known unto God are all his works from the beginning of the world. So the tabernacle of David speaks about the glory and the goodness of God upon all nations and people. And we're going to be looking at that in weeks to come. How God is raising up the tabernacle of David in these days. And the tabernacle of David is a picture of the church of our Lord Jesus Christ. The tabernacle of David is a tabernacle or church without walls. For all to see the glory of God. And the continual freedom of praise and worship. It is a tabernacle of kings and priests. And it goes right along with sowing and reaping, as, as Amos puts it. God is speaking to us about restoration of kingdom praise and worship and kingdom sowing and reaping. These two go together in this prophecy. Kingdom praise and kingdom worship going together with kingdom sowing and kingdom reaping. Both praise and worship, sowing and reaping, is a way of the life of faith. That is what your faith must focus on as a church, raising up the tabernacle of David. Now, the Bible has a lot to say about the tabernacle of David, like it speaks about people getting saved. This is a tabernacle of David. There is no Jewish people here. All of us were Gentiles. Meaning we come from races outside the Jewish people. And so James uses that to say that this is now that. So God raising up the tabernacle of David with the glory of God is for you and I to be saved. So we can experience the plowman overtaking the reaper. Hallelujah. So we're going to knit this together as a beautiful garment of faith. And you're going to get your harvest. Every one of you are going to get your harvest. Because we're going to teach you step by step how to reap the harvest. Some of the things, number one, the raising up the tabernacle of David according to Amos is speaking about the heathen and the Gentile coming to the Lord. And so it's speaking about us. So we the tabernacle of David. So this, that prophecy is for our time. And so the plowman overtaking the reaper is for our time. The tabernacle of David is a powerful theme in the Bible in in Isaiah chapter 16 and verse 5. Isaiah 16 and verse 5. And in mercy shall the throne be established. And he shall sit upon it in truth. 
in the tabernacle of David, judging and seeking judgment and hasting righteousness. Here the scripture is clear that Jesus is going to sit on a throne in the tabernacle of David. So Jesus is going to rule through the church, through you and I. And we understand what God is doing now. He's raising up the tabernacle of David. You see, my friend, money is the only seed that doesn't have a DNA. God quickens the dead and he calls things that be not as though they were. You must have an activity of the Holy Ghost in your money seed. To bring life to that which is dead. And you need a man of God to receive that seed and speak life and call things that be not. When you do that, you make a demand on the harvest that's in a seed. There must be a faith demand made on that harvest in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. And that's why this tabernacle of David speaks to us about the glory of God. It speaks to us about praise and worship. I tell you, this day church is going to be a church that is excelling in worship and praise. Because um, David, he pitched a tent to bring the ark back. Because King Saul, he was a king without the glory of God. The ark was never a focal point in the tabernacle of Moses during King Saul's reign. So King Saul ruled without the glory. That's why he was a man of the flesh. But David had a hunger for the glory of God. Now there's some things that we will look at why David was a man after God's own heart. That's why God says, I chose David because I knew that he's a man after my own heart. And we've been, we've been looking at the heart condition because God is, is changing hearts. That's the work of the tabernacle of David. God is fixing hearts up in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. So David had a heart, number one, like God. He was a man after God's own heart. Your heart must become a heart like God. For you, how can two walk together unless they agree? So you've got to become compatible to the heart of God. Because if your heart is not right, your harvest won't be right. Your harvest, your heart must come right. The soil must come right in the name of Jesus. And God is a God of the heart. He's saying to you and I, my son, give me your heart. Our biggest problem is when we haven't given our heart to God, we don't fully obey God. And partial obedience is disobedience. That's why we have to deal with the hesitation when God tells you to do something. But, uh, but God has taught me how to deal with hesitation in my heart. So David had a heart like God because his heart sought the Lord. So for you to get a heart like God, you need a heart that seeks the Lord. Amen. You're going you're to have to get your heart to run after God. To be a God chaser from your heart. That's why you must seek the Lord while he may be found. You seek the Lord from your heart while he may be found. And God loves that. That's why David was a man after God's own heart. Then number two, David was quick to repent when he sinned. He was not perfect, but he repented. 
There was a time when David committed adultery. David committed murder. And you can see David's heart when the prophet Nathan came to him. So Nathan comes and he gives David a riddle. It's amazing. Sometimes prophets don't speak that you can understand immediately. But afterwards the Holy Spirit will smite your conscience. Because something is wrong. So Nathan says to David, there was a certain man, parable, talking like Jesus. There was a certain man, a poor man. He only had one ewe lamb. And then there was a rich man that had herds and flocks. And uh, the rich man had a visitor, a traveler come home. And instead of taking a kid from his flock and killing it, he took this poor man's kid, ewe lamb, and killed it to make a meal for this traveler. And so Nathan tells David this riddle. And you see David's heart. That's why the eyes of the Lord are running to and fro across the face of the earth. Looking for those whose hearts are mature towards God. Not perfect people. The church is not about perfect people. The church is about people with good hearts. And it's not speaking about that you won't sin, you won't make a mistake, or, or, or things like that. It just means you've got a heart after God. And you chase God. And something happens when you follow God hard with your heart. It's not so much the actions. The actions will come right. But your heart is following and pushing towards God. It's so beautiful when your heart comes right to God. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And you see David, even though he sinned, the, the heart comes up. And he, he pronounces a sentence on the man that did that. He says, that man must pay it back. I think four times or something like that. Then he also says, that man must be killed. And the prophet lifts his finger up. You are that man. And then David immediately repents. He says, forgive me, O Lord, according to your loving kindness and tender mercies. Blot out my transgression. Against you have I sinned. Create in me. A clean heart. It's David who said a broken and a contrite spirit heart. God will not despise. Every one of us should look at Psalm 51 this week. Because it speaks about the repentance of David. So you see friend the tabernacle of David. is speaking about following hard after God. But God is going to fix your heart up. But he'll only fix your heart up through your repentance. And repentance means a change of mind. You've got to change your mind. You keep doing the same thing over and over and expecting another result. You won't get it, sweetheart. You've got to change how you're doing things. Change is not change till you change. And the only constant in life is change. And repentance means I'm prepared to change. Amen. I want to change, Lord. I want to change even if it's just to please God. I want to change. A change of mind, a change of direction. I'm going this side, this way. But if I change my mind, I'm going to turn around and change my direction. I'm not now going to do things the same way. Change of mind, change of direction, change of heart. My heart gets changed. <laughs> Repentance changes your heart. Ladies and gentlemen, your whole destiny being fulfilled is determined by what I'm saying to you. You fulfilling 
God's destiny for you is determined by you laying this foundation right in your life. I want a heart after God. I want to follow God hard. I want a heart that when God's finger points in my face, I'll be quick to repent. Say, Lord, forgive me. Against you only have I sinned. Have mercy upon me according to your loving kindness. If you have a heart after God like that, you come to God, he'll never cast you aside. You have a heart like that to God, he'll forgive you your sin. You have a heart after God like that, he'll cleanse your conscience. Raising up the tabernacle of David with your sowing and reaping means my heart is right and I sow in faith. And it can happen just like that. You can get an instant harvest this morning. An instant harvest. If you repent and you sow, today you can have the plowman. Because a plowman is repentance. He can overtake the reaper. And that also means that when I reap, I also got a heart after God. And so when the plowman overtakes the reaper, it means in your reaping, your heart is right. Your heart must be right in your sowing, and your heart must be right in your reaping. God says he's going to raise you up to be a tabernacle of glory. The temple of David, the tabernacle of David was full of glory. Tabernacle of David was a tabernacle where there was praise and worship 24-7. There wasn't a moment in time during that time where there was no worship in that temple. God wants you to be a tabernacle of David. You must be a tabernacle of God, God must tabernacle in your life. And that's what Christianity is all about.